I don't yeah. know. Yeah. So um, um, what else? We want to talk what about the, auditions. What are some of the first steps? Yeah, I want to talk about like some of the first steps you make when when getting an audition. So you you get the email from your agent or you get an email from a casting director and they say, okay, Lars, you have this audition. What do you do first? I uh, rent a cabin in the woods and I immediately fly in my private plane to the woods where I hunker down and I like Rocky and I chop wood and stuff. And I just go yeah. deep, deep, deep. Full, deep, full montage. Like deep full into montage, full montage, montage, full acting montage. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The curling logs in the snow and running up and down mountains. And I, I didn't realize I, that you were wolves. so independently wealthy, Lars. Pretty hardcore. Like, you, yeah, yeah. Are you Bruce yeah. Wayne? Like mm, Lars Wayne, yes. Really? Interesting. Yeah. Well, how do you, I'm like, no, I'm kind of like Tony Stark. How do you think I'm made of a... Of a you're guitar. made you're a guitar you're, i'm a guitar, made like a guitar. wow 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 uh no the uh, the truth is i would say it's different now that it's zoom versus live i would say before when it was live i would always want to make sure that i'm physically up and active so mm -hmm. maybe a quick work even if it's just like push-ups and sit-ups or just some something to get me awake go for a walk so that i get like my blood flowing body flowing maybe a little uh, vocal workout that sort of thing yeah um now I would still say that uh, for uh, Zoom workouts, but the um, but it is different because it's at home. So I would say everyone, if you need a space to do that, so you need to either need a studio to go to, or you need to have your your reliable home studio setup where you just flick on the lights and you have your camera there. Like that's mm -hmm. literally how Laughing Viking started. Is I needed a spot to do all this stuff, so I bought all the equipment, I invested in it, and then people needed it. So they started using my services and using the studio space. But um, to, to do it, when I first get a script, very first thing that I do is I would look at who the um, the production team is. So A, who the casting director is, the directors, producers, writers, see if I know any of them, look up some of their work, figure out the tone of the show, watch a couple episodes of the show uh, or, or more, depending on what it is. Sometimes you're lucky enough where you get a full script if it's a feature film or you get a full episode script. So mm -hmm. I would read all of that, um, take a pass. I, I always think like that's the upper echelon is like getting the full script and like right. getting getting the full episode, like right. the full thing, like the full 20, 30 pages of the first episode or something. Like I always think like that's that that's a pinnacle for me or that that's something I want to get to that. Like, right. That's where I want to build to is like they send you the full thing like, yeah, look this over. Like, what do you think of it? Like and you're just and like, nah, or you're like 10 million. <laughs> I'll do it for 10 million. Nah, <laughs> nah, nah. Right. No, my, my thing is always more like, how can I make this work? Like, right. How can I make the machine work? Like, right. Where do I fit in it? Kind of thing. Yeah. That, so that's I, always my thing. I, I would, so that's, I would do that first. And then the, the second is when to get into the text, I would take, I write it, I usually write it out handheld. Sometimes I type it out, but mm -hmm. normally I like to actually write pen to paper and I'll write out the whole script, no stage direction. So I'll remove like, he sits or he glances or he says angrily or like any extra just like most of that some descriptions if it, if it makes sense like if it says sit and then her next line is why did you sit down i kind of yeah. gotta do a little bit of that movement but basically i take out all stage directions and i remove all of the uh punctuation as well so i don't so that i'm not playing commas and that was something that i learned through tom Todorov studio and it's just it kind of gives you a clean slate it releases you from any mechanical things about like this is when i sit up this is when i stand this is when i yell because there's an exclamation point this is when i pause because there's a comma um and he, he sort of taught me like um in human life we don't we don't talk with punctuation we just like I mostly through this episode I've been rambling and ranting and they're just this one run run on long sentence. But then when we stop, take a second. Yeah, then it's really then it lands right. And and you talk about earning your pauses too. Yeah. So um, I think and I think that's the reason that if you throw that stuff off, it almost guarantees that your auditions are going to be unique because the trap for a lot of people is they'll play, they'll speak the punctuation. Mm -hmm. which is slow the the auditors uh get ahead of uh you and um the audience like it's not exciting if they watch 50 people do this and they're like yeah 
they're like almost if they can be mouthing along with you and then this is when he rolls his eyes and this was when he points and this is when he sits and this is when he crosses his arms like that's it's not compelling so it releases you of all that to then have those things to play with and then i go through all of the text with guide posts which is uh through Todorov's technique which is essentially michael shirtliff's um, book the audition for those people who have read that I highly suggest it. it's like what well, probably one of the actor Bibles mm -hmm. and I mark up my script go through all that stuff uh, and then I just play with it as many times as possible to to sort of dial up all those guide posts which the guide post the way to think of them is like a checklist or um, sort of a dial maybe even a dial sliders on a on a soundboard or like a mixer board where you're like yeah dialing up all these things and they're the the key components of storytelling and the key physics of performance and sort of all the things that just naturally not naturally but sort of scientifically make up good storytelling and good performance nice that's what yeah. i do I, I know you i know you talked about stage directions and i and i always like try and eliminate that as much as possible especially especially when you're doing like a, or I know in a plays, they always do like they sit down and like for plays, that's usually the first performance of it. And like, that's what the actor did in that moment. So they just wrote it down kind of thing. And so you don't, you don't need to do those things. Unlo again, unless, as you said, like, unless it's set, like the next line is someone saying, oh, I, why did you sit down? Or right. like something to that effect. Like, you don't need to do that. Right. Or you can uh, do your own thing like that's the most important thing is like bringing bringing yourself to it and like really making your own choices fuel what the character's doing. Right. Because that's that's what's going to read. That's what's going to make you unique because you yourself are unique because no one else is like you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> no, and you're right. Like, yeah. There's no one you're else right. that can be you, but you. Right. And that's, and like, that's, own that's your a, uniqueness. That's and a like, big key. That's, that's why we always talk about the, the notion of they being like the, the, the saddest thing is when we're helping actors with uh, auditions and they're like all stressed out and anxious about like, Oh, what do they want? Well, I think they want this or like, they'll, they'll, they'll think about it. They'll have an idea and then they'll be like, yeah, I like this, but I don't know if that's, is that too much or do mm -hmm. are they gonna, and they're trying to like play this guessing game with these mysterious people in the sky that they actually don't know. And so the and chances you end of up putting those people on a pedestal. Right. And like walking into the, like, even it, like, because we're not walking into rooms anymore and like just willy nilly, like walking into a room where you've already put somebody on a pedestal, you put this group of people that you don't know, like in this position of authority over you, you feel like you walk, you walk in and you're like, I, I don't want to yeah, be like, here. This isn't something I'm comfortable is, with. And you is immediately this what you want on yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is this what and you like, want? Do you mind if I use this chair? Yeah. May I, may I sit? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And like you gotta you gotta take the space and it's gotta be yours. Right. Like whatever makes you feel comfortable will be the right thing to do. Right. Without being an asshole, obviously, you're not walking yeah. in and be like, hey, yeah, I'm the shit and fuck all you guys. Like, it's not like it's it's collaborative. And the whole thing is you're there to solve a problem. And I, I like to think like when I see something that I actually want to get, I'm basically assuming that I got it. Mm -hmm. And my audition is me demonstrating 80 percent or pretty close to what I would feel I would do on the day so that I'll work it like rather than being totally rough. Like I was like this this is my best. And if we had to shoot this or this, if this audition was the footage you had to put in the thing, yeah. how close, how close is the footage I give you to being the performance on the day and then take it or leave it. If they like that, great. If they don't, then wasn't my thing, you know, but then, yeah. you know, you I, think it, I think it was Al Pacino that said like every audition is just your chance to perform in front right. of a random audience. Right. That's why I've been really loving self tapes and audition sessions here at laughing Vikings recently, because we've been stretching and playing like just doing some fun things, doing some th fun things with frame too, mm -hmm. like where we have the opportunity to do wide stuff where we're doing physical stuff and then getting close and, and doing some dynamic things. And then we've been doing, we're also playing with green screens. I was just going to well. say green oh, screens. Yeah. yeah. We've done some really fun things where it's like a scene in a warehouse and we drop a warehouse behind each other or yeah. I, we did one. I was in a prison. I was in a, the back of a van. Mm -hmm. we, we did the comic book one today and it's like, 
yeah, you, you can sort of tell it's a green screen, but it doesn't look, it's not like I'm glowing or I'm all weird or blotchy right now. And, it, it, and that it, sort of gives you like that little extra spice at like the end, like at the beginning of it all, like, oh, wow, this is different than right. yeah, it's everyone a else's. I, I think anything you can do as an actor in the scenario where a casting director may be looking at a hundred tapes in a row, like if it's mm -hmm. a wide casting, anything that's a pattern interrupt that you can do will serve you because it's just like they'll snap too and be like oh th that's why a moment before if if the script is written to start on a certain line and you have a moment before where either you like a, a line that carries you into it or or mm -hmm. a, a secondary action you instantly will stand out if if they've heard if the first line is hey john and every, 50 times they've heard hey john hey john hey john and then you add something or when or at the end as well, if you add um, like a little button or you just play the scene out for the next beat, like the scene mm -hmm. ends on the other character, you add one more line as they're walking away. That's there's it's undeniably unforgettable as long as you ex execute it well. Yeah, as long as it's within the frame of the character. Right. Yeah, it's got to make that sense. That you want to play. Yeah, it, it kind of has to be the if they didn't say cut right now, what would be the next thing that would make sense for your character to say in that given scenario? And yeah. then it's fair game. And then it shows you have imagination. And it also shows the producers and casting and the writers that if they just let you fly, you're like, okay, I wrote this character in the pilot, but you're the guy and you know exactly who he is and everything you says fits. Like that's, yeah. that's I think brilliant. It, I think it was the, the janitor in Scrubs they, they didn't even, they barely even wrote his lines out for him. They would just be like, in the right. script, whatever Neil said, right. and like, that would be it. Like, yeah, yeah, They'd yeah. do so it he, 10 times, he'd do it 10 different ways, and then they'd pick one of them or two. He'd just come mopping in and then just throw something. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. This is the best. That's amazing freedom to have, too. And that, that makes you valuable. Like, that's actors who have that actor and writer brain like it's, mm -hmm. it's one thing to be able to execute a, like a writer's words as delivered in a director's vision as they see it but to be able to do that and then layer on your own choices in your own creation with sort of that writer's brain but in an improvised moment thing where it's just coming out then you're like you're sort of unstoppable and you're just your own movie and and that's that's when people would want to create a project around you It'd be like fuck like we need to doesn't that's you see people get big contracts where Netflix give them fifty million dollars where it's like we don't even care what you do but we want you to do stuff and we we want you to do it with us instead of with that other big company because you we know that you're a rock star so mm -hmm. here's fifty million make a bunch of cool shit you know yeah and right. like that's that's where you want to get to like that's what you want to be doing you want to be creating your own work and like creating things for yourself on top of all the other things that are coming your way as well. And like you're nailing those kind of thing. Right. I always have tried to think of always been about 50% sort of playing the game of, of auditioning and, and um, sort of like you get smaller parts and then bigger parts and bigger parts sort of like, and I don't mean smaller in terms of like, there's no such thing as a small role. I just mean like less, less lines or actor role, like a day player mm. versus a, a meaty thing. And then 50% always just creating my own things, kind of making my own opportunities, seeking out my own things so that no matter what, if, if no one, if no gatekeeper ever gave me the opportunity to be in their thing, mm -hmm. I would always be happy because I'm always creating my own things and I've kind of got my own content creation and, and you're flexing your own muscles which is great. And you, you can attest to that now being around uh, the studio more and having like an outlet to, to do this. Yeah.